Hi everyone. Hello. Um, I just want to note that after that talk about academic dress being very reserved, I'm aware I've got quite a loud <laughs> hat on. <laughs> but I want to say I wouldn't, I definitely would not have this hat on if I was at a conference. Um, it's mainly because I'm at home and hopefully as I go through my talk, the reason for the hat will become apparent. I'm just going to try and share my screen. Yep, all good. Okay, perfect. So, can everyone still see just the presentation? Uh, we can see the presentation perfect. well. Yeah. So, yeah, my name is Sophie and I'm going to be discussing dress practices in the home during COVID-19. Um, this presentation uses an autoethnography to consider whether I'm dressing for myself or for the screen during lockdown and where these two things might overlap. Um, to do this, I've been thinking about concepts of place and of space and of concepts of the public and the private and how these have been altered by the increasingly virtual, social and virtual workplaces that many have found themselves in during lockdown. So the BBC reported that clothing retailers were the hardest hit in the absence of social interaction, whether that's going on holiday, going to work, seeing friends, um, and that has decimated demand for new outfits. But as we've already seen, those social interactions still take place. Um, probably not going on holiday, but going to work, seeing friends still takes place, but it's mediated now by the screen. So I'd just like to think about differentiations of place and space for a minute. The concept of space is abstract and without meaning. What makes a space a place is the meaning that it's given. The difference between space and place can be summed up in the difference between a house and a home. It's the people that give the space meaning. As Tuan expresses, what begins as undifferentiated space becomes place as we get to know it better and endow it with value. The ideas space and place require each other for definition. So you can see on the slide that space can be abstract, a location, a defined physical space, detached empty space, unpeopled space, and a place has meaning, is experienced through the senses, has social connections, no rigid boundaries, and is both filled and peopled space. So I thought this was really well summed up in a tweet from Agnes Rocamora. who uses metaphor to show the existence of multiple places in the space of her flat. Our flat has suddenly expanded. We have two, we have two new offices, aka bedroom and living room, a new private meeting tutorial room, and a new staff room and cafeteria, aka kitchen. The lecture halls are coming soon. Um, this tweet juxtaposes the public, the lecture hall, with the private, the bedroom and the living room. And it allows us to open up the idea that different places can reside in the same physical space, in this sense, our own homes. And it also allows us to wonder if peopled space includes virtually peopled space. So many of our homes have undergone a similar remodelling. My own flat is now my workplace, a gym, a bar, a restaurant, a place to relax, and it's, it's still my home as well. Um, but these are rendered semi-public through the use of the screen. And I say semi-public because it's not just anyone that can access these online spaces. They need to have a link. I'm thinking particularly about Zoom and other such uh, applications. They need a link to access it. It's not public like Instagram or Twitter if you share your posts publicly, which anybody could see. It's likely that you'll know the people who you're sharing a screen with, or at the very least will share a common interest or goals such as yoga, fitness, or fashion and clothes. So now I'm going to move on to what I've been wearing during lockdown and I'd like to thank Jana and Laurie who spoke earlier about lockdown clothing for giving me the prompts to reflect on how my clothing choices have altered during this time. So my clothing in lockdown is either for extreme comfort or extreme display. It's dressed down or it's dressed up. Uh, my personal experience is that I've been wearing clothes in lockdown that I wouldn't ordinarily wear in public or necessarily in private. I've swung between dressing for, for extreme comfort and extreme display. 
many of the things I've been wearing recently, I've only worn previously at festivals or on holidays, both places where social norms and habits of dressing become disrupted. So I'm going to talk about dressing down a little bit. Um, I work mainly in loungewear, so leggings, t-shirts, jumpers, dressing almost entirely for comfort, usually in my dressing gown as well, only throwing on a shirt, makeup and headscarf if I have a meeting. I see this as the equivalent of women keeping heels under their desks to put on if they had an important meeting, something I observed at most of my jobs and something myself, I myself have done. However, for a Zoom call with very close friends, I'm unlikely to change or put makeup on. Even though I'll still be on a screen with them, I don't feel the need to dress up because I think they're people I would invite into my home when I was dressed in my kind of at home clothes. I found myself gravitating towards things that are comfortable but still bright, things that I love to wear and the things that bring me joy. I'm wearing things that I have a greater emotional attachment to. In particular, when I was ill with coronavirus, I wore one of my dad's shirts, old t-shirts, and I've reached for it more frequently whenever I've needed comfort. And this isn't something that I wore really before lockdown at all, and now it's part of my regular wardrobe. So I suppose it's because the other reasons you might wear clothes to look presentable, to fit into a social situation, to look good for work, have been removed unless you're in front of the screen. So when I'm not, I'm left thinking, what am I drawn to today? What resonates? So for dressing up, I love an excuse to dress up and lockdown has not prevented this. I have lots of bold accessories, as, as you may have noticed, and an extensive collection of hats, which come in handy for Zoom socials. I've worn things on screen that I would be too self-conscious to wear in public or things that are so uncomfortable or social situation specific, such as my wedding dress, an 80s party dress, hats, that are, they're rarely worn. At home, once you feel discomfort, you can simply change. And only the intended viewers see your outfits, or more if you choose to post them to social media. There's no danger of any special items getting lost. In short, I've felt empowered to wear clothes I love to wear, but haven't worn in years. So in a sense, in dressing for the screen, I've also been dressing for myself because I've been reconnecting with clothes I love and dressing up, which is something I love to do and something I really missed. So I've also taken part in, actually, I'm going to go on to the next slide, which is a selection of the outfits I've worn in lockdown, both uh, dressed down and dressed up. And they relate to this next bit, which is I've taken part in secret cinema. Um, for those who don't know, um, Pre-lockdown secret cinema created immersive worlds based on film and attendees are told to dress up as characters or to be in the film. Uh, during lockdown they've run Secret Sofa which encourages everyone to all dress up at the same time on a Friday and all press play on the film together. So this is something we usually did on the outside and gave us a reason to dress up almost every Friday so that's where a lot of these um, outfits are from. I've worn corsets, I've worn a party dress, I've worn my wedding dress, I've worn headpieces, everything. So, but this also led to evenings with multiple screens. We'd meet friends via Zoom, chat, compare outfits, and then also watch the film together on another screen, which was interesting having multiple screens. Um, we were dressed up for the film, but we were also dressed up for each other and then also documented on Instagram. But actually some of, when I was looking for the photos, some of the weeks I don't have pictures of. So it was very much dressing for that moment, which was still mediated by the screen and a feeling of togetherness, knowing that people up and down the country were also doing the same thing as me. So the bright leggings I decided that weren't serious enough for the gym were worn to most of my home workouts. And I've also worn shorter shorts and shown more skin than I might have outside of the home. So through the screen, I felt protection from the imagined gaze and judgment of others. Uh, I feel my style is less restricted than it was before the lockdown. And I feel freer in my clothing choices now than before. Um, as a last thought on this section about the use of masks in that our public space has become impacted. 
and we now see our friends' faces in our homes, but covered faces in public. Um, public space for me when I'm wearing a mask has suddenly become a little more private. Whenever I've worn a mask, I felt a little less visible and a little more protected. So, oh, no, no, no. There we go. Oh, come on. So I'm just going to quickly, oh, hats on Zoom. Here we are. So an example of this new semi-public virtual space is the trends for hats on Zoom, a trend so prevalent that Vogue wrote an article about the best hats to wear on Zoom. Of course, this is partially about dressing from the waist up, but it also fits into other points raised. How many of these Vogue staffers would feel comfortable wearing their hats outside of the home and then even then at a work meeting? Hats are fun, striking and not usually worn on an everyday basis. But I also think it's about dressing for joy. It's about dressing for fun. The hats would rarely be worn in public or private, yet here they are in the third space of the screen in the home. And I also thought about hats and novelty. So as the novelty of lockdown wears off, does the novelty of wearing hats on Instagram wear off? Have I run out of time? Okay, one. Uh, I'm afraid it's one minute only. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Can I have another minute or is it time for yes. questions? Yeah, of course. Oh, uh, okay. One minute. Yeah. Right. So I'll just finish then um, with suggesting that it's a new space, the third space of the screen for particularly on Zoom, and that is distinct from the usual public space outside and the private space of the home. Um, and thinking a little bit about ritual and liminal space. So in anthropology, a ritual is a ceremonial process and a liminal space is the space between, between two worlds, between one identity and another, between two different markers. And I think lockdown can be conceptualized as a liminal space in which the previous rules of dressing have been suspended and the rules for dressing in these new semi-public spaces of the screen have yet to be determined. That's, I'm done. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Thank you so, thank you so much, uh, Sophie. Uh, sorry, yes, to actually uh, having had to uh, stop you from talking. Uh, comments, questions? Mm -hmm. Let me see if we have any hands, physical or digital. Uh, yeah. I might. It's Lenore. Yeah, yeah Lenore, sure. Um, I wanted to say that uh, I, 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 it's exciting. Thank you so much. It was, in my opinion, really, really good. And I loved the idea of uh, third space. And it's very important that we started to give name to this thing, because in my opinion, online is here for good. I think that things have changed and that one of the outcomes of lockdown is that online events proved very useful and very promising and it's not going to disappear. It's going to actually evolve and uh, become a very serious part of our cultural life. And my comment actually is that I do think that we will start to develop a vestimentary etiquette for online events and this is only the beginning and the whole thing about the whole joking thing about cats on zoom is actually something that we will start as a, we will study as the beginning of the whole what we will wear in different situations on zoom in the future because this dialogue will 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 have to begin I'm done. <laughs> okay. okay, Sophie. Great, thank you so much for your comment. Yeah, I think the same, and it's just trying to um, navigate what these new rules will be. Um, yeah. I was thinking about things about comfort and weather and temperature. So when I'm at home, I don't need to worry about if I can cycle in my outfit or if I'll be too cold, I'm always too cold, or if how much I have to carry. So that's one of the reasons that I think I felt freer and also you can easily change like if you're uncomfortable in something you can change so you don't have to wear 
something for the whole work day like I will be taking this hat off as soon as I've finished um, my presentation because it's not super comfy thank so, you so much yeah, we, we have we have a question from uh, or comment from Jana Nukumova uh, Reynolds. Jana, please. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. And even Great. see you. Yes. Thank you so much. That was uh, fascinating. It's lovely Jana, to see Jana, you. Sorry, Jana, sorry. Can, can you hear me? Really, well, the sound is really bad. Like you know, uh, it was. Oh God. Uh, yeah. Let's let's have. Yeah, we have Jenna first, and you probably move to uh, to somewhere to somewhere closer to Rota. Thank you so much, uh, Jenna. Yes, hi Luda, hi Sophie. Hi. Um, so Sophie, I'm gonna um, respond to your hat. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I, I just wanted to ask you a bit about the kind of um, archive status because I know that your hat is a real Schiaparelli hat, and my hat is a is a knockoff Schiaparelli hat. And I never wear it. Um, I have worn it to Secret Cinema actually three years ago, the last time I wore it. Um, but I just was wondering about if, it, if you feel from a conservation point of view that the screen allows you to wear precious things that you would normally um, fear um, the elements or fear losing. Things that are, are clearly museum pieces, which I'm sure your hat is maybe not the only one. Yeah, certainly. So. I bought this hat because I couldn't not buy this hat. I saw it at Old Spitalfields Market. I was like, oh, I need, I need to own that hat. And I haven't actually worn it for those reasons, for kind of fear of loss, fear of it getting damaged. And actually I'm worried about wearing it now because I have, to get your hair curly, you have to have quite a lot of product on. So I'm now, I'm slightly concerned that hair product will get onto the hat. So there, there has been that worry, but otherwise it is archived nicely in its box in tissue paper. Um, so yeah, it will probably go, go back to the top of the wardrobe after I've worn it. Uh, thank you. Jana, is it, has it? Let's try. I've yeah, connected try. to the next. Yeah, yeah, it seems Yeah, right. can you hear me okay? Right yeah. Okay. So thank you so much, Sophie. This was so fascinating to hear and I was so happy to hear that, you know, that we have inspired you to, for, for kind of to, to, um, present this, like the, to, to start thinking about those things and come to this amazing conclusion. So I mean, wonderful but um uh i also really liked hearing about the third space and the liminal space and i had two comments here one of them being i was reminded of um a lecture by john eicher that i heard a few years ago i don't know if she's written if, if that was based on something she has written because i haven't read this piece of writing but um in that lecture, she was talking about three kinds of self, and she's obviously an anthropologist, so she uses a lot of uses a lot of anthropological sort of uh, frameworks as well. She uh, so the public, the private, and the secret self. And whilst the public and the private are, yeah, okay, that's sort of all quite clear what that what that is all about. The secret self was the one that I think at the time she was still kind of developing this concept herself. Um, and um, I'm almost wondering if uh, if what you're talking about, the third space and this kind of liminality is actually linked to that secret space, uh, secret self. And my other kind of reflection was that uh, all this sort of takes us to the whole discussion of, um, of uh, the, the lockdown as a Carnival, carnivalesque situation. It's a time when uh, the kind of the normal rules are suspended, the normal rules of operation, and that was something that reading your response about uh, uh, about wearing clothes that are not, you know, that you don't wear in ordinary. Uh, I think you might even have cited this. Um, you, we might even have used that very term at the time, the carnival. Uh, 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 yes, um, uh, how how the well the whole lockdown is basically a situation where the top top and the bottom have kind of changed places in uh, so many kind of high and low have changed places and everything's upside down and uh, and uh, the normal rules are suspended so um, yeah I just found it really fascinating your reflections on on all of this yeah thank you yeah I didn't get much of a chance to expand on um, the ritual and the liminal because I I went on too long <laughs> um, but yeah definitely about carnival and dressing up I noticed some of my friends who don't really dress up like finding hats and putting even if they didn't have a hat putting something else on their head so they could join in <laughs> with people on zoom so I think it's given people a bit more confidence 
to wear things that they might not have the confidence to wear outside. And yeah, that could be the kind of secret self going back to who you feel mm-hmm. you are without having to perform for what you feel others might think of you perhaps. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about ritual and dressing up as well, because for my anniversary, we put on fancy clothes and we had a fancy meal. Um, but we didn't, we weren't on the screen to anyone. We took a few pictures, but we were dressing up to kind of mark the occasion, um, even though no one saw us, which I thought was again, interesting in terms of ritual and liminality. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, we have a comment from uh, Claire Rose. Uh, she yes, draws our attention to the experience of women in cultures where modest dressing is practiced outside, but more relaxed dressing is possible in social events with restricted participants, for example, women only gathering for weddings. So it's a comment on third space. Uh, and yes, and comments from Lainey. Uh, so uh, yeah. Uh, applauding your boldness <laughs> right okay thank you so much uh for for yes for for the paper for the presentation and uh, for the look <laughs> and actually yes uh, uh jenna thank you so much for joining in i think this is what conf- uh, fashion conferences are all about yes it, there is always place for performance 